Hey everybody and happy Resurrection Day. Today is the Life Group lesson for April the 4th, 2021. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 12. And I have my journal from Luke's Gospel that I've been taking some notes in and I want to share about five things from today's lesson from Luke as we look at the resurrection of Jesus. Let me open us up with a word of prayer. Father, be with us today and may we learn something new as we study and read and believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lesson today. Amen. Today we want to see, first of all, that Jesus' resurrection changes everything. Let's look at Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 3, and see what the women who come to the tomb find. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in, but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So several women had gathered to finish preparing the body of Jesus after he'd been crucified on the cross and buried by his friends um, in a tomb. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus had prepared the body very quickly on Friday after Jesus had died and buried him in a tomb and it had been sealed with a stone and a Roman guard had been placed there. The women then come to finish preparing the body, and they would have expected to return to their homes after doing this. The apostles probably expected to return to their fishing boats or their families or other jobs. These women arrived prepared for one thing, but they ended up encountering something entirely different that they were unprepared for, and it changed everything. Now, in Mark's gospel, uh, he tells us as they headed toward the tomb, they were wondering, who will run, roll this stone away for us? But when they arrived, Luke tells us they found the stone rolled away, and they also did not find the body. The repeated usage of the words found and find in verses 2 and 3 in Luke emphasized that this discovery was unexpected. It uses the phrase here, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The risen Jesus Christ is the Lord. And for the people reading this gospel, the term Lord was a reference to God's authority. So this highlights how the resurrection affirms Jesus is Lord and that he is also divine. Next, we see here that the resurrection is a promise fulfilled from Jesus. Let's look at verses 4 and the first part of verse 5. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified, and they bowed down to the ground. Not only were the women perplexed or confused about what they found, they were also frightened by the two angelic men. Uh, their perplexity is now replaced by fear or terror. Uh, they bowed in great fear. Now, the act of bowing could result from their respect for others of a superior status, um, but it's more likely that they were bowing in an act of worship. Um, angels, however, would refuse to accept worship. It only belongs to God. Worship only belongs to God. And so the women are rattled because this is not the way things are supposed to work. When people die and are buried, they're supposed to be in the tomb. The body is supposed to be in the tomb. Um, that's it. Uh, but the resurrection of Jesus is a reversal of how things are supposed to work. And they end up being a promise that things are not going to be the same from now on. 
big changes are now coming. Thirdly, let's look at how Jesus foretold his death and resurrection. Let's continue in verse 24, verse 5 through 7. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Asked the men or the angels. He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. These angels reminded the women what Jesus had said to them and the disciples while he was still in Galilee. In Luke 9, 22, Jesus had said he would suffer at the hands of the religious leaders, be killed, and be raised on the third day. And again, in Luke 18, uh, Jesus spoke about a time when he would be handed over to the Gentiles, be mocked, mistreated, and flogged uh, before being killed, and then rising again on the third day. Uh, the events that had happened at Jesus' resurrection should not have surprised these women, for what had just occurred is fulfillment of Jesus' own words and his own prophecy. Uh, they were not only foretold by Jesus, but they were a necessary part of God's plan. The only just way for God to declare sinful men and women as righteous and bring them back into fellowship with him was through the sacrificial death of his only son, Jesus. Jesus just didn't die for us. Jesus died instead of us in our place. He took the payment for our sin, something he did not deserve. And in addition, Jesus promised that on the third day he would rise again on his own power which serves as God's seal of approval and the confirmation that Jesus' work was finished. This is all done through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He stands as the Lord of all creation and our only hope in salvation from our sin and death and hell. Jesus proves that the resurrection on his own power means that he was who he had said he was. He is God's son. He is the Messiah. Okay, fourthly, we want to realize that Jesus is alive. Let's look at verses 8 through 10. And they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles these things. Okay, so realizing that Jesus had already taught them about his crucifixion and resurrection, the women's attitudes immediately changed here as they realized this is all true. When he had spoken about his death before, they didn't want to accept it. Now, they were realizing that he not only died, but that he had risen from the dead. In ancient times, when you gave a historical account based on eyewitness testimony, the names sometimes functioned like footnotes. So it's a way of saying, if you want to check out the um, validity of what I'm telling you, you go talk to these people. So they name these women right here. Mary Magdalene is named, Joanna is named, Mary the mother of James is named, and there are other witnesses, other women who saw this, and they all go back and they start telling the apostles what had happened. And it fact checks the credibility of the report by being able to know who these women are that saw these things. Luke indicates the women not only told the apostles, but they kept on telling them. Um, it indicates that they tried repeatedly to get their story across to the apostles. They weren't ready to accept this yet because they hadn't seen it for themselves. And just because these women were saying that it happened didn't make it true for them yet. So let's see what happens in these final verses. And finally today, Let's learn that there is hope for us all 
through the resurrection of Jesus. Let's look at verses 11 and 12 as we conclude the passage today. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, the apostles, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stopped to look in, he saw only the linen cloths. So he went away amazed at what had happened. Luke basically has us go with Peter and see for ourselves. Peter ran to the tomb in a hurry, and John accompanied Peter to see what had taken place. John, in his own gospel, actually tells us that he outran Peter to the tomb, but he stopped short of entering it. Uh, Luke notes that Peter looked inside the tomb, but he only found the linen cloths. Now, this is significant because the presence of the linen um, dispels the initial theory that grave rotters took the body. Linen actually had more value than a corpse would have. So the fact that um, the linen claws are still there means that there's validity here in the resurrection. And grave robbers did not just take the body. They would have taken the linens, the shroud or the head covering that was there. For Peter, he had just failed Jesus Christ by denying him three times. And now... There was the birth of hope going on inside of him. He's amazed at this. If Jesus is still alive, then there might be some hope for him still. There's also hope for you and I as well. With a simple phrase that Peter went home, Luke captures the return trip back to the other disciples. Peter is marveling, or he's amazed at what had happened. His mind is overwhelmed by this turn of events. And we can have the same hope too. There's hope for us, and we can ponder and marvel at this incredible account and what it means for us. Jesus Christ died on the cross, but more importantly, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He is alive. So, happy Resurrection Day. Thank you for joining us in today's lesson. We will continue through our study of several of the passages in Luke in the next session. Happy Easter, everybody.